Hello coders, I hope you are coding well. In the previous video, we completed and tested our login user API call. And in today's video, we will create login component with routing. And then in that login component, we will create login reactive form with input fields and validations. So let's get started. So in our Angular application, first of all, we need to create a new folder. And to do this, we will right click on our app folder and we will choose new folder and we will name this folder as basic. And in this folder, we will keep all the basic components and services. And now let's right click on this basic folder and we will open it in integrated terminal. And in this terminal, we will give the command to create the login component as ng g for generate c for component. And we will name this component as login. And as you can see, our login component is ready. Now we need to create a route for this component. And to do this, we will open app.route.ts. And in this file, in the routes array, we need to create a route for the login page. And to do this, we will create an object in this array. And in this object, first of all, we need to give the path. And after this, for the path of our login component, we will give this as empty string because we want to keep that as default page of our application and after the path we need to give the component and we will give this as login component and we will import it from our basic slash login folder and with this our routing is completed now let's save this file and after this we need to create a reactive form in this login component and to do this we will open basic folder and then we will open login.component.ts and in this file, first of all, in the imports array, we will import shared module and we will add the import from our shared folder. And after this, we need to create login form group and we will name this as login form. And after this, for the type, we will give this as form group and we will import it from angular slash forms. And after this, we will create a constructor in this component. And in this constructor, we need to inject form builder to build our reactive form. And to do this, we will write private and we will name this as FB. And after this, we will write form builder and we will import it from angular slash forms. And after this, we will create ng on init method in this component. And in this method, we need to initialize our login form and we need to mention the controls. And to do this, we will write this dot login form is equals to and after this to build the reactive form, we will use this dot form builder and then we will call group method. And in this, we need to mention the controls. And first of all, we need to get the email. So we will name the first control as email. And after this, for the by default value, we will give this as null. And after the by default value, we need to give the validators and we will give this as validators dot required. And after this, we need to create second form control and we will give this as password. And after this, for by default value, we will give null. And then for validators, we will give validators dot required. And with this, our TS code is completed for the login page. And now let's save this file and let's open HTML file of our login component. And in this file, we will write HTML code for the inputs and a button. And to do this, first of all, we will create a div and we will give it a class of center form. And after this, we will create h2 tag and for the text, we will write enter your credentials. And after this, we need to create a form. And to do this, we will use form tag and we will give it a class of custom form. And after this, for the form group, we will bind it to our login form. And after this, we need to create form items. And to do this, we will use ng form item tag. And in this form item tag, we will create ng form control tag. And after this, to show the validation message, we will give this as please input your email. And after this, in this ng form control to show the icon, we will use ng input group tag. And in this for the ng prefix icon, we will give this as user. And after this, in this ng input group, we will create input tag. And for the form control name, we will give this as email. And for the placeholder, we will write enter email. And with this, our form control is completed to get the email from user. 
and now we need to create same kind of form control to get the password and to do this first we will create ng form item and ng form control tags and in the ng form control we will create ng input group tag and for the icon we will give this as lock and after this we will create input tag and for the form control name we will give this as password and after this for the type of this input we will give this as password as well and after this we need to create a button and to do this we will use button tag and for the text in this button we will give this as login and after this we will disable this button if our login form is invalid and with this our html code is completed as well and now let's save this file and let's open css file and in this css file i will paste the basic css code and you can pause the video and you can copy this basic css code and now let's save this file and let's run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors and now let's go to the browser and let's validate the functionality of our login page and as you can see in the browser for the default route of our angular application we can still see the logo of ngzoro and to fix this we need to add router outlet in our app.component.html and to do this we will go back to our angular application and in our angular application we will open app.component.html and in this file we will replace the existing code with router outlet tag and then we will save this file and as you can see our application got compiled without any errors and now let's go to the browser again and in the browser as you can see we got our login form and as you can see in the browser for the default route we got login form and on this page we have the heading enter your credentials and then we have the inputs for email and password and at the end we have login button which is disabled for now and now let's enter the data in this email input and after this if i remove this email from the input as you can see we got the error please input your email and now let's enter the email again and then we will add a password and as you can see now the login button is enabled and that's it for today's video in the next video we will create auth service and then we will write the code to collect the data from this form and then call the login api of our spring boot application